Hi, my name is uh, Dr. Aju Matthew. I'm a senior consultant medical oncologist in Kolancheri in the state of Kerala in India. And uh, I have with me Dr. Vishal Gewali. He's a very well-known face in uh, oncology. Vishal, how are how's things going? Things are good. Uh, I'm very excited to be here in Delhi. So what do you think about the practice in, in Nepal versus practice in Canada and how does that relate to relate to the training and the way we practice oncology in a low and middle income country like India? Uh, to be honest, uh, I don't find much difference in terms of clinical skills per se. But I think more uh, difference is about how we are trained with regards to evidence-based medicine or evidence-based practice. Uh, I'm being very honest here, but until I graduated medical school, I was not aware of evidence-based medicine. Uh, I, w I didn't know that I was supposed to practice based on evidence. I practiced based on what my teachers taught me, and I practiced uh, what I call textbook-based medicine. I read textbooks, and the textbooks told me what to do for a particular patient. But uh, moving to a developed country, a high-income country, I realized that our practice had to be based on evidence, and those evidence came from properly conducted randomized controlled trials. And uh, reading, a, we don't have to do clinical trials, but being able to read a clinical trial and make correct inferences from that clinical trial is a huge skill set, and that's a mandatory skill set for today's clinicians. I, I agree. You know, I have an interesting story to tell you. Mm -hmm. uh, after my graduation from medical school, and mm -hmm. I've been to the U.S., did my residency, and worked as an assistant professor there, I just returned back to my medical school and just was walking through the wards uh -huh. just for nostalgia. Uh -huh. And I was overhearing a group of medical students standing around the professor, uh -huh. and the professor was asking them the question, how do you do cardiac percussion? And I'm wondering, <laughs> why are we talking about cardiac percussion in 21st century? Yeah. Cardiac percussion is where you're trying to figure out the borders of the heart, when uh -huh. the x-ray is actually just 100 rupees. Yeah. So I agree with you that we're still stuck to the old ages in a little exactly. bit. Yeah. Um, critical thinking is missing. Yeah. We practice textbook-based medicine. Mm -hmm. And when I was training, I didn't have access to journals. Mm -hmm. So the first time I actually read a journal or mm -hmm. read an article was when I went abroad and I was grilled by my attending. Uh -huh. Okay, you say COPD can be managed this way. Mm -hmm. Where is the evidence for that? Yeah. What if I just treat him with uh, just inhalers? Yeah. Right. So I think uh, if we are trying to change the clinical practice of oncology in low and middle income countries, I think teaching the trainees on critical appraisal of evidence on how to how to do a clinical trial is, a, is, a, is will come later, but first how to properly read a clinical trial yeah. publication yeah. and how to understand the biases and various limitations and how to make correct inferences from a clinical trial. I think that would be the basic cancer ground set in oncology education yeah. that we can accomplish with relatively uh, smaller uh, amount of investment yeah. compared to you know the moonshot training programs. And, and that's yeah. right, because you know we often talk about the advances in medicine, but we miss the elephant in the room, which is exactly. the cost of the care. Yeah. You know, financial toxicity is very much there. Mm -hmm. And what contributes to the financial toxicity of cancer care in India, mm -hmm. I'm sure it is the same in Nepal. And it's actually the same abroad, too. I practice yeah. in the West. Mm -hmm. It's the same abroad, too, but it's mm -hmm. somehow covered by insurance or yeah. government aid. But the hype surrounding some of these drugs, the mm -hmm. hype surrounding some of these advanced techniques, mm -hmm. Is, is translated to financial toxicity. Every year, nearly mm -hmm. 55 million Indians mm -hmm. are pushed into poverty because of healthcare expenditure. Exactly. So I think mm -hmm. we need to clear the space. We mm -hmm. need to have uh, conflict-free discourse, mm -hmm. conflict-free education mm -hmm. that actually provides the real truth mm -hmm. and nothing but the truth yeah. and take out the hype from the field so that young oncologists, mm -hmm. trainees, students can actually understand where the benefit lies, mm -hmm. what is actually good, mm -hmm. what's actually not so good, mm -hmm. what's probably good, yeah. and what's definitely bad. Yeah, totally. I, I agree. I mean, I was having this conversation with Dr. Shirohi last night about how the FDA approval status has a huge impact on clinical practice in India. Uh, that that's a little strange. The FDA approval, which is for the US, has a huge impact on clinical practice in India. Uh, th that's the reason why I'm going to talk about FDA approval and clinical practice in low income countries in my talk in Kolkata. Um, and similarly, 
people are justifying, I hear that people are justifying treatment in India based on the inclusion in the NCCN guidelines, which was not made by India. Yeah. Uh, so, I think we can debate about each drug in each specific setting all the time, but the basic skill set that we need to teach the trainees is, you know, not to give them fish, but to teach them how to fish, right? So, to teach them how to understand the biases and yeah. the limitations of the trial so that they can be an independent reviewer of uh, the, the particular trial for the particular patient. Yeah. And in, uh, in that case, I think um, online education and, and uh, institutions like eCancer can play a big role. Absolutely. I mean, I was the program director for oncology in the US. You'd be surprised to know that things aren't very different there versus here. Mm -hmm. Critical thinking everywhere is valuable in a trainee's education and you know because of the clutter of all this hype surrounding and the media is filled with the the noise from conflicted opinions mm -hmm. or the drug makers opinions we need we need clear evidence we need clear uh, articulation of facts and that's the same for my students abroad as well in, mm -hmm. in the US the same for my students here in India mm -hmm. clear education so critical thinking is one important facet right mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. The second fact is uh, a lot of hype and a lot of fear goes yeah. into cancer care. A lot of patients in India don't access cancer care due to fear. Do you think uh, uh, modules or, or, or simple patient informationals mm -hmm. through portals, free portals will help take out the fear from the cancer? Totally. Yeah, totally. I mean, we have two things to do. One is physician education. Yeah. about clinical trials and everything that we discuss. And the other is patient education because there, there are a whole lot of... There are a lot of taboos and stigmas surrounding cancer care and cancer treatment. There is the problem of hype. Uh, like in our part of the world, we are, we are in a unique situation in Nepal and India and, and countries in the Sark region that A, we, are, we also buy the hype that is common in the West, uh, like alkaline water and whatever. And we also have our own unique sort of traditional hypes, uh, including, you know, certain plant-based uh, diet, or, uh, certain Ayurvedic medication, uh, or, you know, certain juice made from certain traditional roots. Uh, and there are anecdotes and anecdotes of people uh, propagating the myths. Uh, yeah. with, uh, uh, Every day yeah. I lose several patients to alternative <laughs> medicine. The, and I, I'm always asked, uh, is this there in the US also? Mm -hmm. Surprisingly, it is there in the US also. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, in the US, mm -hmm. majority of patients actually take the proven therapy mm -hmm. and they do the alternative stuff too. Yeah. Whereas here, the first thing they hear about cancer, they go in search yeah. of an alternative yeah. stuff and avoid their chance of getting a cure. So I think and then they, also, is important. they also pay a huge amount of money out of pocket to get access to the shiny new drugs, immunotherapies and yeah. precision oncology and everything in the West. Like I have seen patients sell their houses, sell their uh, land and property to go to uh, wherever they can. Like, a lot of people from uh, Nepal come to India. Uh, a lot, someone who can afford more, they go to Singapore and Thailand and Bangkok, and someone you know, even goes to the U.S. and to Europe to have access to unproven therapies that are not even funded in in, in Canada and UK. Yeah. So, so we have problems at both end of the spectrum. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, and I always believe that in in a country like India, there is mm -hmm. the double trouble. Mm -hmm. One is the access. Mm -hmm. A lot of patients don't have access to mm -hmm. curative treatment or treatment that actually makes a difference. Yeah. And we have the, the other trouble, mm -hmm. which is regulation, mm -hmm. where all sorts of stuff can happen. Mm -hmm. You have hospitals and labs selling mm -hmm. cancer panel. Mm -hmm. The other day I had a patient coming in, coming to see me saying, you know, a lab gave me 3,000 rupees worth test for 700 rupees. Mm -hmm. And uh, these are the cancer tests. I asked, do you have any symptoms? Nothing. What is the test that they've done? AFP, CEA, CA, 99, you name mm -hmm. it, they've got it all. Mm -hmm. Even a low dose CT scan. Mm -hmm. um, and I told the patient, the only thing that you did mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. was getting a pap smear. <laughs> so so, so there's, yeah. there's a lot of hype, yeah. there's a lot of fake news, yeah. there's a lot of uh, influence with the alternative medicine. Yeah. Uh, so overall, global oncology is a fun, adventurous yeah. space yeah, to yeah, work it in. Is, it is. Uh, you, can, you can be at the, uh, at the center of uh, both the progress that's happening in the developing world as well as uh, the extreme over-treatment and over-diagnosis uh, phenomenon that's happening in the developed yeah. world. Yeah. Um, and I think, uh, as I mentioned, the appropriate uh, first step, the cancer ground step, 
to this uh, um, global oncology problem would uh, start with cancer education, yeah. both to physicians and to patients. And actually, social media has done a lot of good in democratizing care, right? Yeah, and I've totally. noticed that uh, mm -hmm. people in uh, big institutions mm -hmm. in the West, they have started to listen to what is happening in, in uh, India exactly. or what is yeah. happening across the world. The opinions are being transmitted real time yeah. and uh, the, the glorified uh, spaces are being mm -hmm. destroyed yeah. that everybody is coming to the same level yeah. to have the same kind of discourse, yeah. which is great. Things that I could not voice to mm -hmm. somebody, I can speak with authority, speak mm -hmm. uh, at the same level and mm -hmm. have my no voice heard. And you're a classic example of actually having had a meteoric rise because of smart use of more social media. You've, you've produced your voice mm -hmm. correctly and mm -hmm. at the right time and have, mm -hmm. have uh, had success with that. Uh, so what do you tell young uh, oncologists uh, or trainees in India? Should they be on social media? Yeah, of course, uh, definitely. That's a no-brainer. I think social media has revolutionized uh, medicine. Uh, it's you know the first revolution in medicine was well are you are you are you using a game changer no but but i truly believe it has revolutionized medicine uh, because you know the first revolution in my opinion of yeah. course uh, was uh, evidence based medicine right and the use of randomized control trial or the use of evidence to inform practice how that revolutionized medicine was that the no longer was uh, there are a hierarchy in medicine. So if you knew the evidence, you were as good yeah. as the senior most person was. And uh, even if you are a trainee, now you could be in a position to ask your professor why he is practicing certain practice, why he is doing certain practice. And you could question his practice. There was no longer eminence-based medicine. So that was a big revolution in, in, in medicine, in my opinion, the first revolution. Yeah. And the second revolution is digital med or the social media, because now, in social media, everyone is equal. Everyone and and like your social media persona is out to the world. It's yeah. not limited to your professors or your departmental chairs or people who um, your your career is stuck with. So now, what you are saying and what the other top person is responding to you is open in the public, and the whole world can is, make judgments yeah, on their own. Yeah, yeah, is evaluating that, and that has a huge influence. I have seen. Pretty big people do such petty things on social media. Uh, and <laughs> Trust me, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah, and I feel embarrassed uh, sometimes. So I think, I, I, to answer your question, to be specific, I would definitely encourage all the young trainees to be on social media, to fearlessly point, uh, to to voice out their concerns regarding any trial, irrespective of whether that person is a top person or not. Yeah. Uh, uh, but and to, if you make a mistake, apologize. Yeah, that's yeah, it. That's yeah. what I said. To be so, honest, uh, to, be honest. To, to maintain professionalism, professional. uh, like not uh, never criticize a person, criticize the yeah. idea, criticize the trial, uh, and it's a it's a very important tool to to educate yourself. Uh, but I, I guess one one suggestion would be to not limit your uh, academic presence to only social media. You should also be doing academic work, which can uh, which you can expand upon using social media, mm -hmm. but if you if you like confine yourself to social media alone, yeah, uh, then I guess uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or or if you just want to follow things and just use Twitter for instance as a mm -hmm. table of contents, yeah, yeah, uh, that's fine too. As a yeah. as a you know like a library of yeah. things that yeah. you need to read or you need to follow, that's fine too. But uh, I think eCancer has done mm -hmm. a terrific job in yeah, totally. democratizing science yeah. to make it accessible to get information to people all over the world, yeah. not just in low and middle income countries, India, Africa, mm -hmm. even in the US where people are listening to the e-cancer interviews, mm -hmm. yeah. or listening to people give their opinions on specific questions. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the e-cancer journal is also quite well cited now. Yeah, the, the best thing, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm of course conflicted because I'm in the board yeah. of uh, e-cancer. I recognize that, yeah. so, but good um, that you mentioned the conflict. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I have the conflict, but the best thing about e-cancer, mm. like there are many good things about e-cancer journal, but the best thing I love about e-cancer journal is the pay what you can model. Yeah. So if you can pay $1,000, you pay $1,000. If you can pay $500, you pay $500. If you can pay only $100, $100. If you can't pay, it's free. You just be honest. Yeah. So how amazing is that? Yeah. I, I, have, I have never seen that yeah. uh, anywhere else. Pay what you can. Yeah. Well, anyway, coming mm -hmm. to the uh, coming to the social media, you know, we would not have met uh, mm -hmm. but for Twitter. 
and uh, we've become good friends over the years. Uh, I, you know, you came to Kentucky to visit mm -hmm. me there, and now we are here in Delhi. Who would have thought that <laughs> yeah. this going to happen? Uh, Actually, the field of global oncology, or for that matter, oncology care anywhere in the world, is closely tied to teamwork. Totally, you know? totally. Together, everyone achieves more. Team. Exactly. Exactly. And we go together. We want to work That's together. Nice we want to try to we want to try to solve the problems together because yeah. one solution in one part of the world. Mm -hmm. could be the starting of a solution to another part of the world, problem okay. in another part of the world. So I think uh, uh, it's great to have you here and talk to you about all of these issues. And uh, thank you very much, I, I, Thanks for eCancer for hosting yeah. us. Uh, yeah, thank you. thank you. Thank you. I had a very pleasant time. Yeah.